Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for a Catholic commemoration 75 years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Due to the global pandemic, many of the events planned for the anniversary have been canceled. We are honored to continue the commemoration with this online event in order to live out the words of St. John Paul II at his visit to Nagasaki, when he noted, to remember the past is to work for the future. What kind of future is the Catholic Church working to build 75 years after Nagasaki and Hiroshima? As followers of the Prince of Peace, we work to build a world with a more just peace, without nuclear weapons, and our program today embodies that spirit, as the bishops of Japan and the U.S. stand together in solidarity and working and praying for peace. We are honored today to hear from a survivor of the atomic blast, Archbishop Takami of Nagasaki, President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Japan, and from Bishop Malloy of Rockford, Illinois, Chairman of the International Justice and Peace Committee of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. I am Dr. Marianne Kusumano Love of Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C., and Professor Hirokazu Miyazaki of Northwestern University is kindly serving as our translator and bridge today in our, in our program. This is a project by the Catholic Peace Building Network on revitalizing Catholic engagement on nuclear disarmament. We thank our partners, our online host, Georgetown University's Berkeley Center for Religion, Peace and World Affairs, the University of Notre Dame's Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, Keough School of Global Affairs, the Catholic Peace Building Network, the International Federation of Catholic Universities, Northwestern University's Shale Catholic Center, the Catholic University of America's International Institute for Policy Research, Pax Christi International, and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, Office of International Justice and Peace. There are other 75th anniversary events which analyze the policy debates, and we invite you to join us in October for an event with Archbishop Takami, which will explore these debates. But our program today will take a different approach. In a cruel irony, the U.S. atomic bombs did what centuries of persecution in Japan had not done, destroyed the center of Christianity in Japan and in Asia. Archbishop Takami's life is witness to a miracle, certainly that he lived through the blast that killed so many, but also as living stones that rebuilt the church and Japan with their lives. Priests and nuns were among the first responders in Hiroshima, ministering to the needs of bomb survivors, reminding us all that even within the horror of war, love is possible, peace is possible, peace is practical, peace is our calling. Rather than ending the church or turning to cycles of vengeance and violence, Nagasaki and the church arose from the ashes to educate, advocate, and be ambassadors from peace, carrying the message from Nagasaki around the world. The Catholic Church is not a national church. Instead, we are the world's largest nation, about as big as countries like China and India, yet not limited to the borders of countries. War is fratricide, a family feud. Learning from World War II, the world and the church worked hard to build better right relationships and create new institutions to support and sustain a more just peace. Germany, Japan, and the US today are close allies. Yet for all this progress in the past 75 years, nuclear weapons remain with us still posing a clear and present danger. Today, we witness many negative reversals with a new nuclear arms race, the abandonment of arms control treaties, and a threat to resume nuclear testing. Against this context of rising dangers from nuclear weapons, we gather today to commemorate, to pray, to educate and advocate for peace. We will hear next from the, Bishop of the, uh, from the president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Japan, the most reverent Mitsuaki Takami, Archbishop of Nagasaki and a survivor, a hibikusha in utero of the atomic blast in Nagasaki. We thank the Archbishop for making the time to be with us today and to share his experiences to reflect on the efforts of the Japanese Catholic Church to work for peace. え、私は
しかし母方の祖母は全身やけどを負い丸一週間治療を受けることなく苦しんで亡くなり母の妹二人も亡くなりました結婚していた叔母は遺体が見つからずその夫も亡くなりましたもう一人の叔母は修道場でしたが外で働いていて熱風を浴びて12日間苦しんだ末に亡くなりました戦後14年してからいとこの一人が急に原爆病にかかり17歳で亡くなりましたしかし数千の家族がその生員のすべてあるいはほとんどが死ぬという悲惨な状況でした原始雲の下では静かな町が言葉では表せないほどの無残な姿に変わっていたのです当時浦上天主堂の中で秘書殿の準備のために国会の秘跡に預かっていた24名ほどの信徒と司祭1人聖堂に向かって歩いていた主任司祭が即死しました浦上小局の1万2千人の信者のうち原爆後4ヶ月の間8500人が亡くなりました何よりもあらゆる犠牲を捧げて30年の歳月をかけて作り上げた祈りの家を失ったことは精神的に大きなダメージを与えました神を信じられなくなって教会から遠ざかる信者も出ましたしかし生き残った被害者は被爆者はひどいやけどのために怖がられたり差別されたりしました原子病は遺伝すると考えられて結婚を断られた人が大勢いましたそして75年経った今も被爆の影響に苦しんでいる人がたくさんおられます長井隆博士は原爆の結果最も恐ろしいことは人間に対する信頼を失ったことですと次のように書いています私は原子爆弾の破壊を自らこの身に受けたものとして原子爆弾の破壊のうちで一番恐ろしいものは何であったかを知っています原子爆弾によって私たちが受けた被害のうちで最も大きなものは家を失ったことでもなく財産を焼かれたことでもなく多くの血のつながりつながるものや友を殺されたことでもなく体が不自由になったり病気になって働くなったことでもなく実にそれは私自身の魂の醜さをまざまざと見せつけられまた隣の人たちの魂の醜さをもはっきり見たことによる人間に対する信頼を失ったことであります聖ヨハネ・パウル2世教皇が1982年81年2月に東京・広島・長崎を訪問され広島では強い平和アピールをなさいました日本の司教団はこの大砲と平和アピールを生かすために翌年から広島の原爆の日である8月6日から終戦の日の15日までを平和循環と定め日本の教会全体で平和のために祈り平和について考え平和のために行動するように進めましたこの循環は現在も続けられています1981年2月25日聖ヨハネ・パウロ2世教皇は広島の平和公園において日本語でこう語り始められました戦争は人間の仕業です。戦争は人間の生命の破壊です。戦争は死です。過去を振り返ることは将来に対する責任を負うことです。広島を考えることは核戦争を拒否することです。広島を考えることは平和に対しての責任を取ることです。人間同胞に向かって軍備縮小と全ての核兵器の発揮等を約束しようではありませんかこの冒頭の言葉は広島原爆資料館の玄関ロビーの記念碑に日本語と英語で刻まれています教皇フランシスコはさらに一歩踏み込んで核兵器の所有も使用も倫理に反すると明言されましたそして核兵器から解放された世界を作るためにすべての人が一致協力しなければならないと強調され教会としての決意を述べられました
原子力の戦争目的の使用は倫理に反します。核兵器の所有はそれ自体が倫理に反しています。核兵器から解放された平和な世界。この理想を実現するにはすべての人の参加が必要です。個々人、宗教団体、市民社会、核兵器保有国も非保有国も、軍隊も民間も国際機関もそうです。核兵器の脅威に対しては、一致団結して応じなくてはなりませんカトリック教会としては民族間また国家間の平和の実現に向けて不退転の決意を固めていますそれは神に対するそしてこの地上のあらゆる人に対する責務なのです核兵器禁止条約を含め核軍縮と核不拡散に関する主要な国際条約にのっとりたゆむことなく迅速に行動し訴えていきます平和を作るために武器が絶対必要であるという考えを保持する限り核兵器縮小でさえ難しいのですから核兵器廃絶は実現不可能ですアメリカと日本が本当の意味で和解してその上で今後核兵器廃絶のために協力することができればこれに越したことはありません教皇フランシスコのメッセージに応えて広島のアレクシス・白浜満司教のイニシアチブで7月7日に核なき世界基金を正式に設立しましたこの基金は核兵器禁止条約の署名批准をする国が50以上に達するまでそれに向けて活動する人々を支援することを目的としています広島と長崎大支局の中にこの基金を支援する会を設けるほか既存の3つの市民平和団体が共同で運営します日本の司教協議会は今年から9月1日から10月4日までをすべての命を大切にするための月間とし地球環境の改善維持のために日本の教会全体で具体的な行動を起こすことにしていますなぜなら地球環境を守り全人的発展を促進することは平和を作ることにつながるからです。We will next hear from Bishop David Malloy, who serves as the chairman of the International Justice and Peace Committee of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Prior to his service as Bishop of Rockford, Illinois, he served in the Vatican Diplomatic Service, which included postings to the Ap Apostolic Nunciature, the Vatican embassies. In Pakistan and Syria. He also served in the Vatican, helping to prepare the Great Jubilee Year of 2000, which focused on many acts and themes of reconciliation. Thank you, Bishop Malloy, for being with us today. I'd like to、uh, thank you,、uh, Dr. Kuzimano Love, for your introduction and also for your general introductory comments、uh, for this webinar.、Um, they were very comprehensive and I thought really laid. An excellent framework for the reason that we're here today. And I would like to begin my own comments by expressing great appreciation to be a part of this webinar with Archbishop Takami, the Archbishop of Nagasaki. And I say this both in my capacity as chairman of the Committee on International Justice and Peace for the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, but also、um, on a very personal level. I think it's extremely、um, moving. To hear the experiences of the Archbishop of Nagasaki, given his,、uh, his own personal involvement、um, in utero as a survivor of the,、uh, the bombing in 1945,、uh, I think the、uh, important thing here is for us to really keep in mind this. Remembrance, this memory is very important with various aspects. One particularly is the human aspect, and I think Dr. Kuzimano Love summarized a great deal of that. We cannot let something like this become an abstraction, because, as in any element of war, and particularly this、um, moment that we are commemorating 75 years ago, the use of atomic weapons. There are tremendous human sufferings and human costs. And it's important that we recognize those 
and that we uh, do not forget there are always persons and families and stories that are involved with those moments. Dr. Kuzimano Love also pointed out Apart from the suffering, there are great moments of heroism. There are great moments that inspire us because it is the response to a moment like that that we cannot forget either. And for us as Catholics, and as Dr. Cosimano Love mentioned, the involvement of priests and sisters and other members of the faithful, it's important for us to keep that memory alive. I think the other thing for us, in order to make sure that any element of war, particularly this uh, use of atomic weapons and the extensive damage, destruction that it leaves. We need to keep in mind that in any moment of war, there is always what they call the fog of war. It's never possible to have a plan that goes directly from point A to point B. There is always unknowns that develop. And so any idea of nuclear strategy, any idea of the containment of nuclear war must, I think, take fully into account the dangers that are inherent in war and the great nuclear destruction that can follow. The visit of Pope Francis to Hiroshima and Nagasaki last November was another important step to remind the world of the horror of nuclear weapons and the future danger that they pose at every given moment. Speaking in Hiroshima, the Holy Father stated, here in an incandescent burst of lightning and fire, so many men and women, so many dreams and hopes disappeared, leaving behind only shadows and silence. In barely an instant, everything was devoured by a black hole of destruction and death. In Nagasaki, Pope Francis recalled, quote, the unspeakable horror suffered in the flesh by victims of the bombing and their families. How well he kept alive the human element of that memory. But a solemn commemoration of the past like that is not sufficient because since 1945, the world has witnessed the acquisition of nuclear weapons by various nations. Arsenals have been increased and an international order has been built upon a tenuous framework of the threat of mutual destruction from the use of atomic weapons. Pope St. Paul VI commented in 1968, to think that the arms race can go on thus indefinitely without causing a catastrophe would be what he called a tragic illusion, unquote. Five years ago, Pope Francis issued his encyclical letter, Laudato Si, on care of our common home. And of course, our common home is all of creation. And in his wide ranging reflections on that encyclical, the Holy Father reiterated the biblical and theological understanding of creation as coming from the love of God. As the Holy Father stated, creation can only be understood as a gift from the outstretched hand of the Father of all, and as a reality illuminated by the love which calls us together into universal communion. Laudato Si, number 76. Further, Pope Francis underscored the Christian understanding of the special place that the human person, made in the image and likeness of God, holds in the created world. Human dignity is an integral part of the flourishing of creation. And human dignity is also responsible to protect and rightly use what God has created. The bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated to the world that the use of atomic weapons is a threat to all of creation. Human existence can be imperiled and the earth damaged and decimated. And that threat as we know, has only increased over time since 1945. In that context, Pope Francis used his talks at Hiroshima and Nagasaki to seek to renew and reinvigorate the efforts of the international community to build a true and just basis for peace free from the, use, the threat of the use of nuclear weapons. At Hiroshima, the Holy Father stated, the use of atomic energy for purposes 
of wars is today more than ever a crime, not only against the dignity of human beings, but against any possible future for our common home. The use of atomic energy for purposes of war is immoral, just as possessing nuclear weapons is immoral, he said. These comments recognize the use and possession of such weapons as an offense against the creator and his goodness reflected in the world. The United States Bishops Committee on International Justice and Peace highlighted the Pope's words saying, Pope Francis has used his visit to Japan to remind the faithful and all actors, states or non-states of the moral obligation to recommit to the work of ridding the world of nuclear weapons and the threat that they pose. That obligation weighs on the conscience of all to find the means for complete and mutual disarmament based on a shared commitment and trust that needs to be fostered and deepened. But in order to make possible the elimination of nuclear weapons, Pope Francis called for further work to be done. In Nagasaki, he called for, quote, the involvement on the part of all individuals, religious communities, and civil societies, countries that possess nuclear weapons and those that do not, the military and private sectors, and international organizations. Our response to the threat of nuclear weapons must be joint and concerted. There's a need to break down the climate of distrust that risks leading to a dismantling of the international arms control framework. Peace and reconciliation is hard work, and it requires much of all of us. Among other things, the Second Vatican Council taught that we need, quote, a new attitude towards war. If Hiroshima and Nagasaki teach us anything, it is in the words of the council that any act of war aimed indiscriminately at the destruction of entire cities, along with their population, is a crime against God and against man himself. To paraphrase what every pope has said since the dawn of atomic age, the atomic age, never again Nagasaki, never again Hiroshima. I would finish citing the words of Bishop Oscar Cantu, one of my predecessors as chairman of the USCCB Committee on international justice and peace. In a homily given five years ago at the Cathedral in Nagasaki, on the 70th anniversary of the bombing, he said, that's why the Bishop of the United States joined in solidarity with the bishops of Japan in advocating for global nuclear nonproliferation and disarmament. And that's why in our 1983 pastoral letter, The Challenge of Peace, the United States bishops committed themselves to shaping the climate of opinion, which will make it possible for our country to express profound sorrow over the atomic bombing in 1945. Without that sorrow, there is no possibility of finding a way to repudiate future use of nuclear weapons. Again, my thanks to all who have participated in the organization of this important webinar as we solemnly recall 1945 and the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As we've heard from our speakers today, Catholic ideas and imagination have always rested on the concept of a positive, just peace based on right relationships, rather than a negative peace based on violence and threat of violence. Our tradition tells us that positive peace is the goal. Just peace tradition offers moral and practical guidance on how to build a positive peace by expanding participation, strengthening right relationships, restoration, reconciliation, in order to create a peace that is sustainable over time and the planet. Catholic theology and practice on just peace has been expanding in recent decades, drawing from Jesus' peacebuilding work and building on the lessons the church has learned in peacebuilding around the world, as we've heard in the remarks here today. Catholic countries have long led the campaign for nuclear disarmament and nonproliferation. The first nuclear weapons-free zone was created by Catholic majority countries in Latin America. Catholic countries led the creation of the Nonproliferation Treaty in 1968, in which all countries pledged to work for nuclear disarmament and a world free of nuclear weapons. Today, Catholic countries and the Holy See continue these efforts and played key roles in supporting the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. 
the Holy See was the first to sign and ratify the treaty banning nuclear weapons. And the US and Japanese Catholic bishops continue to urge a return to nuclear disarmament treaties. The church's work on nuclear disarmament is animated by this vocation to build a more just and sustainable peace. We thank you for joining us today in this program and we urge you to share it with your community and others. Additional resources on the church's work and on nuclear disarmament are available on the websites of the collaborating organizations. Thank you for joining us as we pray and work for peace and a world free of nuclear weapons. We will view pictures of the statue of Mary which survived the atomic bombings of the Urakami Cathedral, sometimes referred to as the statue of Our Lady of Nagasaki or as Burned Mary, while we listen to music sung by students from Nagasaki's Junshun Girls Senior High School, singing the song 1000 Cranes, which is used every year in the program for the annual commemorative events in Nagasaki. The inclusion of the song in our online event was proposed by Sister Shizuku Katoake, ICM, from the Congregation of the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The bishops will then conclude our commemoration today in prayers to sustain us in our work for peace. I would offer a prayer for peace that came from His Holiness Pope St. John Paul II. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, creator of the universe who extends your paternal concern over every creature and guides the events of history to the goal of salvation, we acknowledge your fatherly love when you break the resistance of mankind and in a world torn by strife and discord, you make us ready for reconciliation. Renew for us the wonders of your mercy. Send forth your spirit that he may work in the intimacy of hearts, that enemies may begin to dialogue, that adversaries may shake hands and peoples may encounter one another in harmony. May all commit themselves to the sincere search for true peace, which will extinguish all arguments for charity, which overcomes hatred, for pardon, which disarms revenge. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 愛の力によって暴力に打ち勝つという平和への道を自ら示してくださいました。これまで人類はその歴史の中で戦争を何度も繰り返すことによって数え切れないほどの命を奪い、自然や文化を破壊してきました。人間が人間の命を奪い、破
この世界から完全に排除されるまで共に協力していくことができるよう私たちを助けてください私たちの主イエス・キリストによってアーメン父と子と聖霊の皆によってアーメン。